If you're new to Mass Effect or just playing again for the first time in a while, it can take a minute to learn or relearn the systems, and while combat will be more intuitive than ever in the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, there are still some subtle tips and nuances that can help make your first few hours in Mass Effect 1 especially just a little bit easier. Now of course, many things have changed in the Mass Effect Legendary Edition, like the feeling of the cover system, melee, and shooting mechanics, but there are some tried and true strategies that still apply in the Legendary Edition as much as they ever did in the original versions. As someone who has played the original trilogy of Mass Effect more than a dozen times, including multiple runs on Insanity Difficulty, I thought it may be useful to give some not-so-common tips and some basic general tips for new and returning players to the franchise. Here are six tips that can help you in Mass Effect Legendary Edition. Number 1. How to best use abilities in combat. In Mass Effect, there are special abilities of three varieties, Biotics, Tech Abilities, and Combat Abilities. Biotics use Mass Effect fields, special non-Newtonian fields that are created when a special fictional element called Element Zero is electrically charged. Basically, it's the closest analog to space superpowers as you can get in Mass Effect. You can throw enemies backwards, lift them up in the air, create a protective barrier for yourself, etc. Tech abilities are like directed hacking techniques that use a character's Omni Tool, a powerful all-purpose tool that can overload your enemy's shields, overheat their weapons, and even turn some robotic enemies against each other. Combat abilities are typical soldier abilities that you can use to overpower your weapons temporarily or give you a boost of adrenaline to increase your damage resistance or aim temporarily while fighting. There is so much to learn about abilities in Mass Effect that it really deserves its own video, but the main tip I'd like to give you is that each of the three categories of abilities is best used for a specific purpose. Biotics are best for crowd control, tech abilities are best for debuffing or weakening your enemies, and combat abilities are best at dealing direct damage beyond all of the damage you'll be doing with guns. If you're dealing with a crowd of enemies that brush you and use melee attacks like Reaper Husks, unleash some biotics to push them back or otherwise disrupt them to buy yourself some time. If you're dealing with enemies that have lots of extra shields, like Geth for instance, make sure to use your tech abilities. And if you're dealing with tankier enemies like Krogan that have lots of extra health, it's useful to have some extra damage dealing abilities to help bring them down faster. Of course, tech and biotic abilities can also deal damage, and combat abilities such as Concussive Shot can absolutely be used for crowd control, but in general, biotics for crowd control, tech abilities for debuffs, and combat abilities for extra damage is a good strategy to keep in mind. Which brings us to tip number two. Number two, prime, detonate, shoot, repeat. This is the primary combat gameplay loop in the Mass Effect series. Prime, detonate, shoot. All abilities, whether biotic, tech, or combat, can typically be classified as priming or detonating abilities. A priming ability sets up a detonating ability so that when the detonator is used, it applies extra damage and force to the attack. For example, if you use the biotic ability lift and then use the biotic ability throw, a small biotic explosion occurs in addition to the normal damage because the biotic energy from both abilities was combined. You can combine tech abilities with each other, or tech abilities with biotics, biotics with combat abilities, etc. It takes a little getting used to knowing which of the abilities are used to prime and which are used to detonate, but especially in Mass Effect 2 and 3, the game does a much better job of making it clear which are which. In general, Mass Effect 1 does not rely on the prime detonate loop nearly as much, but by the time you get to Mass Effect 2, this will be the bread and butter of any high-level combat strategy. Always open up battle trying to prime enemies with one of your abilities, then use another ability or command one of your squad mates to use an ability that detonates, and while your abilities are on cooldown, take cover and rely on your guns to do damage, then rinse and repeat once your ability cooldowns are over. Oh, and speaking of squad mate commands, let's talk about number three. Number three, know which abilities to bring in your squad. In the Mass Effect Trilogy, you'll have a unique group of squad mates that you can choose to bring along with you, two at a time for a total of a three-person party. Some of your companions will have a biotic specialty, some of them will be tech experts, others will be more focused on combat or more tanky, and some will be a combination. In general, it's a good idea to have a well-rounded team, at least some biotic and some tech abilities, along with at least one soldier or vanguard or infiltrator in your group. However, you should also know when to specialize for a particular mission or battle. If you know that you're about to face off against a bunch of Geth, for instance, bring multiple companions with tech abilities and overheat, overload, and hack your way to an easy win. 
In Mass Effect 1 especially, you'll be fighting lots of Geth, so having a character like Tally along will make things much, much easier. Play around with different combinations in your squad to find one that feels just right for your playstyle. Depending on what class you're playing as, you may want to select squad mates that balance out your team with different abilities, or double down and create a highly specialized team of biotics or tech experts, depending on the situation. Also keep in mind our number two tip about detonations. A seriously effective strategy is to bring a squad that maximizes the number of detonations you can pull off in tandem. Number four, use cover, destroy cover. The original Mass Effect released in November 2007, just one year after the classic third-person cover shooter Gears of War, and about two years after Resident Evil 4. Over-the-shoulder, third-person shooter games that relied heavily on using cover and flanking were becoming very popular, and the Mass Effect games naturally picked up on this trend. More recently, cover shooters, or pop-and-shoot games, have become less widespread, and even Mass Effect Andromeda, the most recent Mass Effect game, went away from being so heavily cover-based. That being said, while some things about combat in Mass Effect Legendary Edition are updated, cover will still play an important role. In fact, we know that in certain key boss battles and levels, more cover has been added to the battlefield. It's vital that once any battle has started, you find cover for you and your squad mates. It's even a good idea to manually order your squad mates to get behind cover. Companion AI in Mass Effect has always been hit or miss, and while we've yet to see in detail if that has changed in the Legendary Edition, it's probably a good idea to get into the habit of issuing commands at the start of battle for your squad to get behind sturdy, high cover. I say sturdy because some cover, like crates, can be destroyed if it takes enough damage. And this works both ways, so if your enemies are ducked behind cover, try hitting it with heavy weapons or use one of your abilities to see if you can't break through it. Try to make note of the sorts of cover that break easily and avoid setting up behind it altogether in favor of a solid wall or some other indestructible cover. Number 5. In ME1, level up your character and your squad mates for survival first. In ME2 and 3, level for ability recharge and detonations first. Especially in Mass Effect 1, the words glass cannon can be applied fairly accurately to most of your squad mates if you're not careful. As much as I love Garrus, Tally, Liara, and Caden, all of them can be dropped in a mere few seconds if you run into the wrong situation and are not prepared. Really, only Ashley and Rex feel appropriately sturdy, and even they need a directed approach to their skill trees in order to turn them into the effective tanks they're meant to be. In Mass Effect 1, it's not always immediately clear which talent trees are most important for survivability, so hopefully this helps. If a companion has the fitness skill tree, definitely upgrade that as it directly adds more health to their HP pool. If they have any sort of armor skill tree, like the combat armor or tactical armor skill tree, upgrade that for damage resistance and hardening against tech or biotic abilities, and if they're a biotic character and have the barrier skill tree, upgrade that to give them a barrier that can absorb more damage before breaking. Also, a key tip that many people overlook is that the electronics tree boosts the amount of kinetic shields that a character has. A lot of people think of Liara or Caden as being the worst offenders in the glass cannon category because they don't have a fitness or an armor skill tree, but if you fully level up their electronic skill and their barrier skill, they can actually be halfway decent against higher levels of damage. In ME2 and 3, this strategy isn't quite as necessary since characters are less squishy in general. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't take some skill tree options that favor health, but that the overall emphasis in combat shifts in ME2 and 3 to being heavily based on ability detonations. This means that you want as many detonations as possible, meaning you want recharge speed. Let me be as clear as possible. In ME2 and ME3, you want recharge ability as low as you can get it. Every time you're given a choice in a skill tree, take the option that lowers recharge time on abilities unless you have a clear alternative strategy about doing a gun build. ME3 in particular has a weight component, so the lighter and fewer guns you bring into battle, the faster your abilities recharge. This is vitally useful for any character that is ability focused. If you're a pure soldier who only likes to use guns, feel free to disregard this tip for your own character, but I still recommend specking out a few of your squad mates to be ability focused, and to use abilities as quickly as possible. In ME2 and 3, combo detonations are the most powerful attacks in the game, and you want to pull off as many of these as possible in each fight. In the long run, if you have a squad that can detonate each other's abilities and you have quick recharge times, you'll do much better than if you went for raw power on each individual attack, or just upgraded gun damage. 
Number 6. Maximize your charm and intimidate skill. This tip is really blending story and gameplay, but remember that Mass Effect is the epitome of a story-driven game, so something like this from a character build setup needs to be stated up front. You want to have your Charm and Intimidate skills absolutely maxed out for your level. Charm and Intimidate is how you persuade NPCs in key story moments depending on your alignment. More Paragon, you use Charm. More Renegade, you use Intimidate. In ME1, you have to manually assign points into each skill tree upon level up, but you only upgrade each tree so much depending on your current level. Each level up that you can take Charm or Intimidate points, you should. In ME2, the system was reworked so that your ability to charm and intimidate got better the more you used it, depending on which one you use more. This was not a welcome change for all players because what many realized was that it limited roleplaying by encouraging players to only ever use Paragon or Renegade options exclusively and never to mix and match, since your Paragon could only be maxed out by always taking Paragon options and vice versa for Renegade. Thankfully, in ME3, the system was once again reworked, this time basing your ability to persuade on a universal reputation meter, meaning whether you've been using Paragon slash Charm options or Renegade slash Intimidate options, it all contributes to leveling up your Persuade abilities. Regardless of how each game treated the metagame of Persuasion, the real takeaway is that in a game about story, in a game about choice and consequences, you don't ever want to be in a situation where your options are limited. One of the worst feelings in a game like Mass Effect is seeing that grayed out dialogue option that would be perfect for your character to use in a tough situation, but knowing that you can't because you don't have a stat that's high enough. That being said, it also does feel great knowing that you've earned it when you have leveled up that particular skill. Dialogue is a big part of the Mass Effect experience, and making sure you invest in keeping all your options open at all times will make a huge difference. So that's it for now, 6 quick tips to get you started in Mass Effect Legendary Edition. There's so much more to share and so many more ways to add depth to your Mass Effect experience. Whether you're jumping in for the first time or looking to see something you missed in earlier playthroughs, I hope you'll stick around as we dive into more rare details and tips not talked about quite as often. I'll be covering a few more gameplay tips as well as some more quick hit lore and story items in later videos. This has been the Exalted March. If you like this video, please consider hitting the like button, and if you'd like to be informed of all future videos, please consider hitting the subscribe button and the bell notification. As always, thanks for watching, and thank you for listening.